Hey there folks, Jason here again, and I am uh, here to show you what uh, progress I've made on my bolt action so far this week. Uh, I did get a game in, kind of, sort of, this past weekend, and probably, I don't know if it's all time tomorrow night, but this weekend I'll be putting out a pseudo bat rep and my initial thoughts on the first game. And uh, so I talked to the guy, he was at a local um, gaming group, kind of mini... I don't say mini tournament, but uh, a mini uh, a mini con that a uh, uh, big bunch of gamers got together here in Northern Virginia, and they got about 30 people together. And one of the guys that was playing was a bolt action guy that I met on the forums, and he said he didn't have an uh, you know an 88 German 88, and he asked me if uh, I had any I could bring anything. He was bringing everything else, brought a ton of terrain and stuff. And I said, well, I've got a uh, you know I've got a uh, 75 millimeter pack 40 anti-tank gun for my German force. I haven't done. He's like, perfect. That'll be a great stand-in. Can you bring that along? So uh, I had assembled that, and I mentioned in my last vlog that uh, I also was doing a uh, SDKFZ 222 uh, scout car. So I want to show those to you quickly. I'm going to try to get through these videos a little bit faster. I'd welcome your thoughts and comments. And uh, let me give you my thoughts on the kits too. So let's go ahead and we'll start with uh, with the, the Scout car, the KFC. So I, I, I think I showed the kit, I did, because it had some bubbles in it. And I have to say on the whole, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with the kit. I think I could do the paint job a little bit better next time. So I tried um, Vallejo's Dunkel Grau paint scheme. I decided to go with the gray color, earlier war color on this than the later one. I just want to try something new and um, figure I might as well give that a, ch a chance. On the kit itself, I mean, this is a Warlord kit. It's not bad. My problem with it is, so if you look at a lot of pictures of these cars online, they've got stowage on them, and there's always a, uh, like a shovel that's here. And to me, the model just looks a little plain. Uh, I mean, the turret does, does rotate, and it's pretty well detailed, I guess. I did drop it and broke off, of course, the auto cannon here, so you can see there's kind of a bulge. A bad habit of dropping my, uh, breaking the barrels off of my uh, German models. Maybe somebody's trying to tell me something. So, I mean, it's an all right kit. It's just a big hunk of resin with some metal pieces on there. And so what I tried to do, again, I used the Dunkel Grau, and you just build up the, the, the various different, um, different layers. Uh, had I had to do it again, what ended up happening was, so you base coat it a darker color, and then you've got about three different transitions you can do, and then I weathered it. Um, so the darker, and it's not going to really show up here, uh, maybe a little bit. So you can see the bottom side is darker to show the shadow, and it gives them more of an illusion on the table. What I wish I would have done, and it's a little bit lighter on the top, what I should have done is just painted these top panels, if the, the light's coming down from this direction, should have painted these top a little bit lighter. It doesn't look bad at all. Uh, the airbrush that I would use for that. I have two, I have kind of a general one and then a detail one. The detail one, I lost a part to it and it's in the mail. So I think if I were to do a model this size again, that's what I would do. Um, so it's just kind of a plain model. There's not a ton of detail on it. It didn't come with any transfers, so I had to raid one of my, or uh, some of my other kits. So I just did the, um, the swastikas and then this, I'm not sure if it's gonna show up here. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, camera, bring it back. So you can see this little roller skate looking thing here. That's the sign for um, uh, motorized reconnaissance uh, here. And then I just got a, uh, and that was from uh, the Puma kit that just came out from Warlord. And then this side is a license plate, come on, decal. Um, but if I would have had that, and I would have had the decals for the, the Balkan crosses here, it just is a plain looking model. But I said, the only thing I, other thing I didn't like is, so this is supposed to be like a metal mesh screen. And I know that's tough to model, but it looks weird here. Uh, I don't know if it shows up. Yeah, okay, camera. Yeah, so you can see it's just solid metal. And I tried to, I was gonna try to jam a bunch of wash in it to try to make it look darker, but it didn't really work out. So it's perfectly fine, and I, uh, so I weathered it, chipped it up a little bit, not a whole lot, but then just slathered kind of mud all over it. So I, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how this turned out. I mean, it's a scout car. It's not like a centerpiece model or anything. Other thing that drives me a little crazy, can you hear that? The wheels didn't go on 
straight. I didn't notice it until I was done and had weathered it. So every time I put it down, I hear this. I said the wheel's just this much off, and my OCDness is gonna it's gonna drive me nuts. But I want to move on to something I am actually really pleased with. So like I mentioned, I had to uh, the guy asked me to bring this gun to represent a, a you know an 88 millimeter, the big AT. The, it's actually a triple A gun that they use for any tank. You know, kind of iconic German German weapon. So I really want to spend a lot of time on this kit, and I really think it. It turned out turned out really well. So without further ado, I will uh, I'll show this. So it's a big kit, and you can see this is on a, a GW flying base, just the base. It's an extra one that I had. And so the kit went together pretty well. There wasn't directions, and there's some fiddly bits. It's all metal. Uh, but what I did was I assembled it, and then I did the same, used the same paint scheme on the gun as I used on this. So painted them both gray because I had the uh, the airbrush out. It could do it faster. So I don't know if it's going to show up here in the picture, but I would really try to have the, the light parts on the top of the gun and the um, the trail to show light hitting, uh, give a little bit more depth. And uh, I think it turned out really, really well. I'm really pleased with this. Um, and, and the crew is actually really cool too. So it comes with a crew of four. And um, as you get my, my, big, my big mitts out of the way, and just let the camera do the talking, see if I can zoom in a little bit more. That's about it. Uh, so the, the, the crew of four, I mean, it's always hard for me to tell how good the models are when I just see them in metal. Like the faces and everything, I have to paint it up first. And I have to say, these guys are really, are really characterful. So you get one here, and the guy's jamming a shell in the breach. Uh, one guy in the picture on the, on the Warlord site his arm is up here on the gun shield and he's kind of peeking around the outside. For some reason I couldn't duplicate that modeling. And then you've got a, a spotter here. And then you've got a guy back here leaned over in a, an ammo crate getting out another shell. And I just want to zoom in on some of their faces. Oh, sorry for the focus. Hope I don't get you too, too dizzy here. I just had this set up earlier. Oh, come on. I'm sorry about this, folks. I just had this set up uh, rather well just a, just a second ago. I did want to show these guys because they, they have some really great facial expressions on there. So there's this guy, and I kind of have him pointed backwards. And he's yelling out, uh, maybe calling out to uh, somebody in the rear to bring up more ammo. And uh, this guy, you can't really see anything because he's looking through a scope. But these guys here, and if it'll stay in, if it'll stay in focus while I get this turned around, you can see here you got one guy yelling, and um, obviously you can put different heads on these three guys. Uh, and aside from looking a slightly, a little bit cross-eyed. I can figure out what this camera sweet spot is. If they both look pretty good, um, uh, and so character from models, I painted them the same way that um, I painted the uh, the five infantry guys that I showed you before. But I'm also really pleased with the. So I used the same mud, that Mig mud I've been using elsewhere. The thing it also comes with are two uh, spent shell cases. Um, but I really like how the weathering turned out, and I like how the um, uh, uh, the basing, I think the basing is what I'm most pleased with. So I used a mix of different types of clump foliage and then some dry leaves uh, that, I, that I jammed in here. Maybe they're under like a big tree over the top. Um, yeah, I guess I created a little bit of cover that would help in the game, but I, you know, I would never play it like that model to advantage. But I really just think the color, the color um, contrast between the, the cool colors of the gray with a little bit warmer in the green and then the mud. I think it looks really good. A couple tufts of grass interspersed here and there. One thing I wish I would have done better was, um, you know, if the ground's this muddy that there's mud on the tracks, there should be tracks where they have to push this big old gun up. And that's the one thing I didn't do was to put like uh, tire marks in there. But all in all, I think this came out, came out really well. And, um, you know, this is might be one of the best. I'm even more pleased with this than I am with the uh, the tiger that I did. 
and uh, that doesn't hurt. That's you got a pretty good model to uh, to do it with. So, uh, what am I on to next? So we're gonna put this guy down here for a second. I'm gonna back out a little bit, so I'll slide that out of the way. So I um, so I'm back to infantry again, and um, oops, sorry. Uh, I have decided to move on. I want to have a little bit more elite force, so I. Uh, picked up these guys at the store. So it's a box of 10 vets, and they all have assault rifles, which have two shots in the game with 24 inch range instead of one. So these are late war guys, but that's kind of my force. And uh, this is what they, uh, they look like on the box. So no other weapon options. It's just a group of 10 guys with assault rifles. You don't get Panzerfausts or anything else. So I've got, uh, last night as I was watching some other videos, I went ahead and assembled these guys. And the, and the models are pretty good. It's, it's weird. So most of the other kits, I guess I should put it in the, in the picture. They come with, um, they come with uh, the Renedra, Renendra, whatever, uh, plastic bases. For some reason, you got MDF bases with these guys. Uh, but they're all the same size and everything. So I assembled them and glued them on bases. I'm going to start painting them probably over the weekend. I'm not going to have as much time this weekend. So I mainly get five guys done. So my goal is to paint up five guys. If you look at this, let me uh, show the... Uh, the picture here again. There we go. So the uh, camouflage that these guys have, they're actually wearing part of their uh, tent material as camouflage. If you remember the guys, like, uh, let me get a pointer here. So this guy here, he has more normal kind of monochrome, monotone colors, except for his pants. It's easier to paint this. Obviously, painting something like what this guy's wearing here takes a lot more time than this guy up here. So the kind of the speed painting method I developed for the last guys isn't gonna work on this. So it's gonna take me a little longer to paint. So my goal for this week is to get five of these guys uh, done. And I think that's, that's doable. I will let you know how it goes. Uh, so I'd welcome any of your thoughts, uh, suggestions. Um, these guys in the game are gonna kind of just be, I'm gonna throw them in a transport and they're gonna be my go out. So they're veterans, so they're, uh, they've got a higher, um, well, I, I keep thinking, keep confusing 40K and fantasy, but their morale is higher. They're harder to hit. They have two shots. They're assault weapons, so they get an extra attack and assault. So these guys are some uh, BMFs. If, uh, you know, uh, if you know, you know, you know what that means. That's a, a movie that um, uh, doesn't feel like it came out that long ago for me, but uh, a lot of people probably don't know where that came from. Watch Pulp Fiction. Anyways, hope you guys are having a great week. Hope you guys are having a lot of fun doing some modeling. And I will uh, see you uh, probably this weekend with my Hail Caesar update. So, as always, um, keep on wargaming.